Okay, folks, so this is some world-class spin you're going to hear here. And it's not coming from me. It's coming from Byron Donalds, who is the black congressman from Florida. Famously, you'll remember Byron Donalds came out earlier this month and said that black people were better off under Jim Crow than they are today because of Lyndon Bain Johnson's economic policies and the health and education uh, and welfare packages that he put together that that supported black people, put them where they are today. Yeah, that's the guy. So he was at this Black American Business Leaders Roundtable in Atlanta, and he talked about two things in this clip I want to play for you. He talked about this legislation that Trump, he's giving the credit to Donald Trump for called the First Step Act. And I just want to dispel some of the rumors around how, you know, Donald Trump is, is not the man of the day when it comes to what this legislation was trying to do. He he was not the man of the day. And actually, he he did something very uh, conniving, similar to what he, he did with the border legislation that just got tanked. He did the same thing with this. I'll play that. You'll see that in the clip. And then the other thing that they're talking about is the Charlottesville, um, you know, situation where Donald Trump came out and said, remember that that riot, the Charlottesville riots, where he came out and said, there's good people on both sides. Well, Byron Donalds totally forgets the, the context of the situation where it was actually a Unite the Right rally, which was put on by white nationalist groups, right? I mean, you can't get any more racist than a white nationalist group and far right groups. And they were there and putting this Unite the Right rally on to protest the removal of a Confederate statue, all right, let's not forget the context here. I mean, that's exactly what happened. So when you think about that and Donald Trump saying, you know, there's good people on both sides, my God, no, there's not. But here's here's how it went. Here's the spin master at work here, folks. Listen to this. So I'm, I'm gonna say, let me say this real quick. Yes, sir. To the white supremacy deal. If that's what Donald Trump truly believed, then why would he undo the 94 crime bill? Because when you did that, what you predominantly did is you cut short sentencing of black men because sure. in the mid-90s, Joe Biden and the Democrats felt that they wanted to treat crack cocaine as a higher threshold yeah. punishment yeah. than any other drug, um, any other what? illicit drug in America. Yeah. He came in and he unwound that. If your whole goal is, I want to be uh, supreme, whatever the case might be, why would you do that? Racist. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, this is where I think, and to your, I'm not, I'm not, and it's yeah. not against you, but I know uh, what you're saying. Yes, sir. It's really more for them than for uh, you. Okay. But I think that people okay. have to get past the narratives that come from from media. Dr. Carson knows what happens when the media wants to have a narrative. Right. I know what it, what it is yeah. when, the, when the media wants to have okay. a narrative mm -hmm. because they just push that as opposed to actually digging into the context. My mother, when she, my mother always raised me to say, to, to think, do not listen to what people are saying. You look at what people are doing. Right. Yeah. And I think that in our community, we have to get Just look at the facts. The narratives that come primarily from media and from people who have agendas. Let's be clear, because a lot of people have agendas and look at what's actually happening on the ground. Right. I'm going to give you another one. Yeah. Um, what's that one? Charlottesville. That's a good oh, one. Yeah. So That's Charlottesville a good one. one. Oh, there's good people on both sides. <laughs> well, what, the, what was never reported, never really talked about is that he was actually doing a press conference on infrastructure that day. Mm. That was a 17-minute press conference. So? By the way, Joe Biden hasn't given a 17-minute press yes, conference. Yes, he has. Come on. 17-minute press conference, right? Jeez. He just kept saying, 17 minutes. I condemn white supremacy. He so said it like six or eight times. In that, same, in that, in that, in that speech. In that same presser. Right. The press just keeps asking He had to be pressured to that. say that. They keep, you know, they keep saying the same thing. He kept saying it. Until he said, look, what, what else do you want me to say? You had this person on that side, that person on that side, and then you have bad people on both sides, and we can't have any of this. Yeah. And they took good people on both sides right. and ran, ran with that for three years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ignored everything else. The clip's still on YouTube today. Yeah. Okay. Which, which is a point okay. that a lot of people, to the point of people coming around, particularly young people, right. that's what they're seeing. They've been told something, and now they're seeing it real for themselves and they're saying wow he never said that wow he never said it's, it's, it's happened several times you right. know That's folks i mean it's it, it, he makes it seem like black people have been spoon-fed a narrative 
and now they're seeing the light for the first time. No, the, the facts haven't changed. I mean, that was a Unite the Right rally. Uh, white nationalist groups put it on. Racist white nationalist groups there to protest the removal of a Confederate statue. I mean, you can't change those facts. And to say that both people on both sides there were good people, no, 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 no. Nobody's buying that. And so, folks, when it comes to that legislation, take a look at this. So this is an article from the BrennanCenter.org. It's entitled, What is the First Step Act and What's Happening with It? This is written back on June 23rd of 2020. It just gives you a little bit of background on the First Step Act. It was intended to do two things, cut unnecessarily long federal sentences and improve conditions in federal prison. And at the time, what was going on, the article goes into... Uh, that before 2010, an offense involving five grams of crack cocaine, a form of the drug more common in the black community, was punished as severely as one involving 500 grams of powder. And it talks about how this Fair Sentencing Act of 2010 tried to change that aspect of it in the sentences that affected, again, mostly black people, but it only affected on a forward-going basis. So everybody convicted under the now outdated crack laws were stuck serving the very sentences that Congress had just repudiated, and that's where the First Step Act tried to fix that. It tried to make it retroactive so they wouldn't have, they could get out of prison sooner. So the the thing that's ridiculous about that, that whole thing that he was talking about, he made it seem like Donald Trump carried the day with that legislation, folks. And I'll show you what Donald Trump did was he did the same thing that he did with the border legislation that came out. And Senator James Langford, you know, Republican, came out with that border legislation. John, Donald Trump shot it completely apart and said, no, basically, I'm going to take care of it when I get into office. I don't want to give the win to Biden for this this huge immigration package. I don't want to give the win to Biden. He did the same thing back then with that legislation with the First Step Act. He did not want to give the win to Obama, basically saying, we'll do it when we get into office. This is something that's going to pass. It's got both us, you know, Republicans and, and Democrats on both sides of this legislation want to pass it. I'll take care of it. I'll take all the glory, which is what he did. So this article is from the New York Times. It's entitled, Why the Senate Couldn't Pass a Crime Bill Both Parties Backed. This is coming to us all the way back, again, New York Times, September 16th of 2016. And it talks about a major criminal justice overhaul bill uh, just seemed destined to be the bipartisan success story of the year. Consensus legislation that showed lawmakers could still rise above politics. Then the election, Donald J. Trump came out talking about law and order and a series of other political calculations got in the way. And notably this, folks, it says other Republicans unhappy that President Obama was already reducing hundreds of federal prison sentences on his own did not want to give him a legacy victory. So it's the other Republicans that stood in the way of getting this passed. You remember back then, towards the end of Obama's presidency, he had a lame duck Congress. He couldn't get things passed. So they did not want to give him this win, which was a, a something that would just go through immediately. They didn't want to give him the win. Donald Trump worked his, you know, Smoke and mirrors, let me take care of this. It'll look like I'm the, the you know, the, the greatest hero of mankind. And then, folks, take a look at this. So when this passed, so Donald Trump got elected, right? He came in, and when it passed, notable conservative lawmakers who opposed the bill included these people. So it, it passed with a lot of Republicans saying thumbs down. Representative, or excuse me, Senator Tom Cotton, Republican from Arkansas, John Kennedy, Republican from Louisiana, Ben Sass, Republican from Nebraska, Lisa Murkowski, Republican from Alaska, all gave it the thumbs down. And get this, no Democratic congressional members voted against the First Step Act. So Byron Donalds, this legislation would have passed back in Obama's day because he was already reducing sentences of people that were in prison. It would have passed way back then, but your man, Donald Trump, wanted to take all the glory. And when he did take all the glory, 12 of his Republican senators said no to the legislation, and there wasn't one Democrat that said no. I mean, so the spin folks, so desperate to re-spin something to try to convince black people that Donald Trump's your man, when he clearly isn't. 
I mean, just think back to when his father ran those apartment buildings in New York City and they, they were trying to exclude black people from those apartment buildings. I mean, Donald Trump has got this legacy that you just can't spin away. Till next time, folks.